guys, it's Hayo Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be reacting on how the Navy SEALs work. Yes, I really know. I really want to know how the Navy SEALs work because I know America is like a, a lot of military groups. I think they have like the Marine Corps, they have the Navy, they have the, like the Space Force, Army Rangers. I think I'm just blabbing a couple of words now. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm saying. But yeah, there's a lot of like uh, forces or uh, I don't know how they call it, but I think military groups. Yeah, army types, I don't know. But then today I'm going to be reacting on how the naval seals work. So yeah, let's just jump straight into the video. Let's go. Okay, so I think from, from what I see already, I think that it looks like the Navy operates underwater. Because I know there's a cold guard too. I think just yeah, says they got the coast. <laughs> A military power. Special operations is characterized by the use of small units with unique ability to conduct military actions that are beyond the capability of conventional military forces. SEALs are superbly trained in all environments and are the masters of maritime special operations. SEALs are required to utilize a combination of specialized training, equipment, and tactics in completion of special operation missions worldwide. U.S. Special Operations Forces, which includes elite commando forces from each branch of the military, such as the Navy SEALs, Army Rangers, Green Berets, and others, have become critical to many U.S. military successes over the past decade. Each branch of the military has its own specially trained teams that can operate in any situation and perform whatever task it takes to get the job done. What does it take to become a Navy SEAL? Even SEAL instructors can't predict who will make it all the way. Wow. The common trade instructors see in future SEALs can't really be defined, they just call it fire in the gut. You either have it or you don't. So wait, it's like the US Navy SEAL, is the, is the training like the hardest training of all, the, of all of them? Or is it just the same? But from the way they say, or the way it sounds like, it feels like, it sounds like it's the hardest. In this video, you'll see how Navy SEALs operate and what they do, the amazing determination it takes to become a SEAL, the widely varied skills they need, and the types of equipment they use on missions. Explosives. About Navy SEALs. The SEAL acronym stands yeah, for Sea, Air, oh. and Land, which identifies the elements in which they operate. SEALs the work in small in units, only. often one to two men, but sometimes in a platoon comprised of up to 16. They are trained to perform specific tasks under any type of circumstance and in any environment. Their training takes mm. place in the desert, the jungle, in extreme hot and cold weather, in and in urban climates. areas. SEAL missions require detailed planning and precise execution. SEALs are trained to perform missions that fall into five main mm. categories. Unconventional warfare, foreign internal defense, direct action, counterterrorism, and special reconnaissance. When SEALs aren't deployed, they're in constant training, both to hone basic skills and to learn new mm. skills and techniques that will make a difference when they are deployed. Guys are the above the categories code. overlap when it comes to actual missions, but these are the basis of SEAL training. To be expert in the skills required to perform these various tasks. This guy looks so focused, eh? In 1941, after the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, U.S. troops were forced to invade Japanese territory by sea, often facing landmines and attacks. Guys, watch the movie or any movie that is related to Pearl Harbor. You should right now, because that stuff is emotional. ...from unseen enemies. As a countermeasure to these hazards, the U.S. Navy began creating teams that were specially trained to go safely ashore and clear the path of obstacles and other hazards and return intelligence on enemy locations. These teams of six men were called Naval Combat Demolition Units. Their training was heavy in physical strengthening and included carrying heavy loads, swimming, running, and maneuvering in small boats. Their training also included handling explosives. Eventually, they evolved into underwater demolition teams. In 
In the 1960s, the Soviet Union's ally, North Vietnam, was fighting against a U.S. ally, mm -hmm. South Vietnam. President Kennedy wanted John to send in small teams of guerrilla fighters to help South Vietnam. With the Army's Green Beret unit already set up, it was time for the Navy to create its own special operations unit. The war cry of the Navy SEALs becomes an automatic response for SEALs during the torturous SEAL training. While there may be other variations in meaning, Huya generally means yes, understood, and I'm not letting this evolution get the best of me. Evolution is the term used for each event in the training schedule. SEAL training is brutal. It takes over 30 months to train a Navy SEAL months. to the point at which he will be ready for deployment. The SEALs that emerge are ready to handle pretty much any task months. they could be called on to perform, including diving, combat swimming, navigation, it's demolitions, weapons, and, and parachuting. The training pushes them to the limit both mentally and physically, in order to weed out those who may not be able to successfully complete the demanding missions and operations with which SEALs are faced. The types of stresses they endure during basic underwater demolition or SEAL are the same stresses they will endure as SEALs. If I can't breathe underwater for over 40 seconds. And I'm not a good swimmer either. So like the fact that they have to like train underwater and learn how to control their breathing, all this stuff just makes it more harder. Can't with stand it when lives aren't on the line, chances are good they won't be able to withstand it when lives are at stake. From day one in SEAL training, trainees are taught the importance of teamwork. Focus is not on the individual. The fact that the SEALs have never left another SEAL behind on a mission is a testament to this belief system. Throughout their training, they learn more and more why teamwork is necessary in the type of work they will soon be entering. SEALs are performing tasks that may not be possible for a single man to accomplish, but can be possible for a team composed of men who have the same training and skills. Their success depends on what they can do together as a team. Basic underwater demolition, SEAL training is divided into several phases. Basic underwater lasts seven months. The initial indoctrination comprises five weeks of learning the expectations and ways of Navy SEALs. More important, it is a time to prepare physically and mentally for what's ahead. Once indoctrination is complete, the remaining time is broken down into eight weeks of basic conditioning, eight weeks what? of scuba training, and nine weeks of land warfare training. You can just say the two and a half years of just tears. <laughs> break it training down for takes you. place at the Naval Amphibious Base at Coronado, California. There is also the infamous Hell Week, which takes place toward the end of oh, basic conditioning. That, uh, hell week. Navy SEAL gear. Like professionals in any other field, SEALs can only successfully do their jobs if they have the right tools. Their weapons, vehicles, and other gear can help them not only perform their missions, but also come out of those missions alive. It isn't uncommon for SEALs to need clothing for varying temperatures and tasks. For example, when swimming to shore for a mission, the SEAL may need gear for extremely cold water temperatures, as well as warmer land temperatures. For cold weather, clothing must prevent heat loss resulting from all sources, including radiation and evaporation. The SEAL must often generate heat through physical activity, and then vent it if he moves into a warmer location or begins to overheat due to extreme of exertion. Layering and ventilation allow for cooling and help keep perspiration from making clothing damp. SEALs use handguns such as the 9mm SIG SAR P226 and the MK23 MOD 045 caliber offensive handgun with a suppressor and laser aiming module. They use rifles such as the Carbine Automatic M4A1 5.56mm and the AK-47. They also use shotguns, machine guns, MK-43 and M2H. I feel like if I had to be drafted or I think you guys call it enlisted into the army or the navy seal i feel like i would train i think a year before i'd make sure i'm the fittest before i even go there i'm the strongest i'm the fittest i'm the fastest then as soon as i get there i guess the training won't be as brutal as it will be for those who haven't done anything the HKMP 59mm submachine gun series, among others. 
Add to that list sniper rifles such as the M88.50 PIP and the M14 sniper rifle, along with grenade launchers, mortars and AT4 anti-tank rockets, and SEALs can choose a weapon to fit the specific task at hand. Navy SEAL Vehicles Each vehicle that Navy SEALs use to transport teams and units to their destination has a specific benefit and utility. One type of vehicle is the SEAL Delivery Vehicle. These are vehicles that operate below the surface of the water to deliver Navy SEALs and their equipment to their mission area. The crew uses underwater breathing apparatus for life support while navigating the submerged SDV to the destination. Remaining completely submerged the entire time, some models of SDVs to their mission area, remain in the area while they complete the mission and then return them to their ship. The MKV Special Operations Craft is the most versatile, high-performance combatant craft in the quick. Naval Special Warfare Inventory. It is used primarily in medium-range ocean transport of SEAL combat swimmers in environments where the threat is low to medium. It is also used for some coastal patrol and maritime interdiction operations, such as destroying an enemy supply line. The MKV can operate from shore facilities or from specially equipped ships. The NSW Rigid Hull Inflatable Boat is an 11-meter, high-speed, high-buoyancy, extreme weather craft used for moving SEAL tactical elements to and from the ship and beaches. It is large enough to transport an entire SEAL squad. The Special Operations Craft Riverine is Naval Special Warfare's newest surface craft. It is used in river environments and has a top speed of 42 knots. It holds up to 20,500 pounds, 9,300 kilograms of personnel and cargo, and is well suited to inland waterways. The SOCAR can be transported by U.S. Air Force cargo aircraft and by helicopter. The Combat Rubber Raiding Craft is a 15-foot, heavily reinforced, inflatable rubber boat that is useful on many missions. This is the one trainees are carrying overhead during basic underwater training. It's often called a Zodiac. Zodiac manufactures the CRRC. In deployment, it is used for over-the-horizon transportation and dropping and retrieving lightly armed seals on beaches and in rivers. While for many years the activities of the SEALs was largely shrouded in obscurity, the U.S. Navy SEALs along with their companion Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewmen, SWCC have become a ubiquitous component in the ongoing war against terrorism around the globe. The units have been in the spotlight following high-profile operations, including the rescue of Captain Richard Phillips of the Maersk ship Alabama and the raid at Abbottabad, Pakistan, where Osama bin Laden was successfully killed. Even with a shift in focus to great power competition, the Navy SEALs will evolve to meet the challenges of an ever-changing and dangerous world. Thank you. From, from my point of view, I feel like a lot of funding goes to this, and I feel like it goes into good because they protect the, the country, they keep the uh, country confident and stuff like that. But then, I thought the Navy SEAL was just the, the guys who operated underwater only. I never thought about the land and the sea. No, sea is water. What am I saying? <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was the guys who just operated underwater. But it turns out they have like three different types of teams, which is amazing. And the training they go through is brutal. I wouldn't enlist myself unless I had to. But then... I pay all the respect to these guys who to take on this job, man, who take on this task. Not everyone has the guts or the bravery to do it. And yeah, guys, if you made it to the end of the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And see you on the next one. Peace.